Without God, I would be nothing. Without God, I would fail. Without God, my life would be twisting just like a ship without a sail. Welcome to the Simple Bible Study Podcast, where we understand that without God, we would be nothing. We open up today in the seventh chapter of Hosea, and uh, we're picking up at the eighth verse. So grab your Bibles, and we're going to get right into this. So Lord, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. We appreciate you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. Now, Lord, we ask that you will bless this lesson and bless our understanding that we would know what you have to say to us. As always, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we left off in the last lesson at uh, chap- I'm sorry, chapter 7, verse 8. And actually, I had gone over the first part of that verse, Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. And we talked about how God is not uh, in favor of mixing. And it's not race mixing he's against. It's, it's, it's um, holy mixing, <laughs> mixing holy with unholy, clean with unclean. And so the second part of that verse says, Ephraim, or Israel, is a cake not turned. Now, I'm sure many of you have made pancakes before. That's the idea here, uh, that they made cakes in the, on, the, on the griddle like we do, and they flipped them over. God says, Israel is like that pancake that you don't turn over. It's burnt on one side, it's raw on the other. In other words, it's good for nothing, <laughs> You, you, and what do you do with something that's good for nothing? You throw it out. This is God's way of saying that Israel, by turning on him, by, uh, uh, by going on and, and worshiping other gods, are now good for nothing. I told you in the last lesson, when we open up chapter 7, God is going to tell Israel about themselves. And he just told them, he reminded me of my mama here, he just told them he, that they are good for nothing. I love how the Lord expresses these, himself in this book uh, because this is about the heartbrokenness of God. This is about God expressing what it's like to have his heart broken, uh, what it's like to, to be hurt by somebody that you loved and somebody that you cared for. And when we get to chapter nine, we're really going to see that. We'll bring that out there. But I want to just get that. That's the focus when you read the book of Hosea. It is a book of of a lover who has been betrayed, as Hosea the prophet himself experienced. And we saw that in the first three chapters. He is now able to express the heart of God because he has experienced it himself. Now, verse nine says, strangers have devoured his strength, talking about Israel, and he knoweth it not. Uh, yea, gray hairs are, th- are here and they're upon him, yet he knoweth it not. He doesn't even know that uh, uh, his strength is gone. He doesn't even know uh, that he is aged uh, Israel thinks that they're still still strong, you see, <laughs> uh, and and this is this is utterly, of course, very sad. I think one of the saddest verses in all of Scripture is there in the book of Judges when Samson had his hair cut. You remember that story? Uh, 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 Samson was set up and by his girlfriend Delilah, and she uh, she was setting him up and tying him up so the enemy could take him out. But every time, uh, he would just break the ropes off uh, of himself with ease. But after she cut his hair, after she found the source of his strength, let's read that over at Judges 16 uh, and 20. Let's go. Oh, let's start at verse 19. And she, Delilah, made him, Samson, sleep upon her knees. And she called a man for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. <laughs> that is a sad a, sto- a verse in scripture to me. He didn't realize. He thought he could just go out like, like before. He thought everything was the same, but he didn't realize that God was no longer with him, that the power was gone. Now that's Israel here. <laughs> 
That's what happens when you get out of the will of God. Eventually, you lose what you once had and don't even realize it. I remember a man who who I uh, was familiar with, and I was told that many years prior to me meeting him, he had done mighty things for the Lord. I mean, he had laid hands on folks that were healed and he had preached mightily and miracles uh, had come from him. Uh, one specific miracle about uh, he laid hands on a hand on the belly of a woman who uh, couldn't become pregnant. And he, he laid hands on her and she became pregnant and just wonderful, uh, incredible things. And that man had become addicted to drugs, though. And I watched that man come to church and he just tried to sing a simple song. He just, I mean, they just asked him to stand up and say, and he, and he tried to sing. And it was as awful a thing as I've ever heard in church. <laughs> he didn't realize that he no longer had the power because he no longer had the Lord. Oh, don't wake up one day <laughs> thinking that everything's good and you still the same. But the power has departed because you left him because you got out of his will. That's a horrible thing. Verse 10 uh, says, and the pride of Israel testified to his face uh, and they do not return to the Lord their God nor seek him for all this. God's warning. He's the pride of Israel, by the way. That's what that means. God had warned them to their face and they still didn't listen. Verse 11 says, Ephraim is like a silly dove without heart. And they call to Egypt. They go to Assyria, flying back and forth. When they shall go, I will spread my net upon them. I will bring down, bring them down as the fowls of the heaven. I will chastise them as their congregation hath heard. Now here in these two verses, he's continuing to tell them about themselves. He compares them to a dove. <laughs> a dove is not known for its intelligence, as you, some of you may know. It's known to be a, well, it's a dumb bird. <laughs> and Israel, by looking to, uh, to Assyria and Egypt, these other nations, for help, was acting very dumb, especially since these are the very nations that are going to trap them. God's going to use these nations to trap them and devour them and do great harm to them. How stupid it is to turn to these nations when you can turn to the Lord. Verse 13 says, woe unto them, for they have fled from me, destruction unto them, because they have transgressed against me. Though I have redeemed them, yet they have spoken lies against me. When you turn away from God, there's nothing but woe in front of you. That's what repentance is. Repentance is to turn from woe to God. But the opposite is to turn from God to woe. <laughs> and that's what they've done. They've spoken lies against God. They've said things that aren't true. And it's the same thing today. They're saying that God blesses things that he never would. <laughs> They're saying that uh, love is love and God is love. And so anything that's love, God loves. Uh, <laughs> my friend, don't fool yourself. God would never bless what he calls sin. And there's people running, running around today talking about God told them, God said this, brother, you ought to be really careful about lying on God. You ought to be really careful about when you say God told you something, there's a price to pay for that. Instead of, uh, instead of, instead of lying or, or the, the chance that you may lie, you want to be real careful about saying, thus saith the Lord. And that's what Israel should have done. Instead of instead of lying to themselves and each other about God, uh, about God accepting their sin, here's what they should have been doing. Uh, verse uh, 14 says, and they have not cried unto me with their heart. That's what they should have done. They should have cried out. When they howled upon their beds, they assembled themselves for corn and wine and they rebel against me. They should have cried out in repentance for forgiveness but they didn't. He says, verse 15, though I have bound and strengthened their harms, yet do they imagine mischief against me. That means when he says he bound them, it means he strengthened them he, or he trained them. That's what bound means. It, it's like lifting weights. He, he trained them to be strong and they turned on him. <laughs> they turn on him after he has made them strong. And now they're plotting against him. 
The nation I live in today became the most powerful nation on earth, all by the blessing of God. And then we turned on him. We put him out of government. We put him out of schools. And, and don't tell me about some, some law to list the Ten Commandments in a classroom. <laughs> if God's word isn't in your heart, then it's just a worthless piece of paper hanging on a wall. We need to repent and turn to him. <laughs> not, with these, not with these empty uh, gestures and acts. We need to turn with it, turn to him with our whole heart. Verse 16 says, they return, but not to the most high. They are like a deceitful bow. They're, I'm sorry, but deceitful bow. Their princes shall fall by the sword for the rage of their tongue. This shall be their derision in the land of Egypt. He says they're like a deceitful or a crooked bow, you know, like a bow and arrow. You put the arrow in and you pull uh, the, the, the arrow back in the bow to aim it and shoot it. But if that bow is crooked, you're going to miss your target. <laughs> My friend, if your life isn't built on the foundation of trusting in God, I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how rich. I don't care how educated you are going to miss the target. <laughs> a good education is fine. A good amount of money is fine, but it's a deceitful ball. You will never hit the target you need if you're relying on those things. You, you, you're not going to have uh, the peace you need. You're not going to have the joy you need if you're relying on those things. You're going to fail, my friend. Those are deceitful balls. But if you aim to have peace, if you aim to have joy, if you aim to have fulfillment in this life, he's the bow. <laughs> ah, you need him in your life. You need to put your trust in Jesus Christ as your savior. For you are a sinner, my friend, and you are lost and on your way to hell. If you turn and put your trust in him, <laughs> he's not a deceitful bow. <laughs> he's the he's the bow that you need to, uh, that you pull back and you will certainly reach your target in this life. <laughs> you won't fall by the sword of, uh, as, as he says, they will here. Uh, you will land in the, in the safety of his arms. <laughs> the safest place in the whole wide world, the song says, is in the will of God. <laughs> That's where you want to be, in his will, trusting in him. All right, we'll pick up again next time in chapter eight. Until then, God bless you.